Hello everyone, Genesis Rider here with another Genesis Tips and Tricks video. Today I'll be looking at some SWAT gameplay on the map Adrift. This is one of the best SWAT games I've ever had considering I was a CSR 46 at the time in the SWAT place that I played. We were playing against definitely players who knew what they were doing. I was playing alone in the playlist without any teammates. And I've had a love-hate relationship with this map, specifically in SWAT, for a very long time. One of my problems is not knowing where to be. Um, I, I typically will spawn, basically run around or rotate through the map clockwise or counterclockwise, running and running and running and gunning until I die. And unfortunately, this has never really worked out for me unless I was facing people who didn't really know what they're doing. The strategy that I'm about to show you, however, it's much more passive, but it does fit in an under a six minute game. So it's very um, easy to share with you guys. And this strategy um, is to basically hold a base and minimize your deaths while surprising enemy players using your surround sound headset. Now I do charge up this ramp and I would like to start out with this opening strategy before moving on to the strategy I mentioned before. We'll get to it a little bit later in the film. Off your respawn, you probably want to be running through box hall, but I knew most of my teammates were already going to be doing that. Running through the box hallway, sprinting, jumping as you cross this doorway, because there can be enemy players over there, jumping as you cross the doorway so they can't headshot you, coming over here and jumping on top of this little barrel and looking straight there where this guy's head is about to poop, peek out. That is where you want to be doing. That's the best opening strategy that I can think of. However, a lot of players don't know that if you spawn and immediately sprint all the way down this hall and get all the way, you can get it almost all the way up these stairs before the enemy players peek out. And I was just trying, this is the basically one of the first times I've ever tried running this direction. And it did work out for me getting one kill. You typically get one or two kills um, running either side. And so you can see what I decide to do instead of charging into the enemy base is I go straight back to our base. And I want to point this out. When you are charging the enemy base off your respawn, if you get a kill right here, okay, and you get a kill, and you're looking across the map, and you're seeing some of your teammates have died, look, lift straight back to your base. I have rarely found people not playing sitting in the back of their base. Don't lift into the enemy base. It's extremely tempting to do so because you think, oh, when I lift into the enemy base, I'm going to be behind them, and I'm going to be able to you know, run up behind them. No, that's actually not true. By the time you lift it to their base, they're in your base. By the time you get to your base, they'll be back in, in their base. It's a vicious cycle. You have to break the cycle, and that's what I'm attempting to do here. I lift it back over with my teammate, and as you can see, I'm covering this hallway, and there is a great use of the BR. That's why you always want to be using the battle rifle. Because of the three-shot bullet spread, you can get almost around the wall shots, like I just acquired around that box. That player did surprise me. That's one of only four deaths I acquire in this film. I'm very impressive as far as the drift goes. I'm actually best at um, Haven in SWAT, I would personally say. But in this um, specific game, I really, really was using my surround sound headset effectively. And I really want to slow down this down and give you guys some pointers here. Right here, I can hear this guy's footsteps. I know he's behind me. I can hear him behind me. And when I look, there are no blue arrows really near me. Those blue arrows are across the map. Nobody, as far as teammates, is near me. I know this is an enemy player. So I turn and kill this guy. Now, I just heard a guy fire right here. And if there was a guy over here, he would immediately know that I was over here because he would have seen the shots and he would have seen his teammate's red X pop up where this guy just died. So I'm going to jump out. And in fact, he jumps out first. This guy is, gets embarrassed for the triple kill. Um, I don't know why he didn't shoot me out of this guy earlier, but you can trade kills like that. It's very possible. Um, and when you lift over, you always, always want to be jumping. When you, as When you lift over, always jump. Now, I want you to watch what I do here. I know this guy just lifts. I can hear him lift. And I'm just going to patiently wait for him to overextend. And then, boom, I'm going to catch him off guard. And I see his teammate over here. So I'm wondering, should I pursue that? Should I pursue that? Is he going to notice that I just got this kill over here? Is he going to turn around and come back at, at me? 
So I'm going to try to um, see if this player is here, but luckily my teammates clean him up. And I'm just going to be sort of holding and staying around on this base. And it, it, this this kind of game, and that, that's a really lucky, me checking the attic right there. You do want to be checking the areas quite consistently. I would notice how I'm using this wall as cover. But when I check this list, I'm just using this wall as cover. And then I'm going to sort of um, peek out. You see how I just peeked out and looked straight at this doorway in case someone had come through? It's all You're always at the plan ahead. Look, look at where they're going to be. Aim where they're going to be. And preferably, if it's a lengthy enough ways away, you want to be zooming and jumping so that you can zoom, jump into their head, and fire, and they're never going to know what hit them. And right here, I'm just using my headset, and um, you probably want to turn up your volume a little bit. I'll try to speak a little bit more softly for you guys. But um, basically, with a surround sound Astro A40 headset, um, you can check up what my setup is in the description of this video. You can basically hear people, and you can hear their footsteps, and specifically on a drift when they lift into your base. And I just want you to notice how I'm checking all the angles in this base. I'm just holding this base. I hear this guy lift over, and immediately pwn him in the head. That's exactly what you can do with a surround sound headset. You can't do this if you have necessarily just a normal, if you're playing with your speakers. You may be able to hear that someone lifted, or maybe hear that if you had the volume high enough, but a surround sound headset puts the volume right on top of your ear. You'd be basically deaf if you couldn't hear the lift. Um, now, yes, the ambient noise of the map is a little bit louder, and I and that sometimes bothers some people. But I love to hear the little intricacies, especially in SWAT, the VR fire across the map. And again, this is just a slower part of the game. I'm just checking all the spots again, but I want you to notice how many times my teammates are dying um, across the way. They're just sort of running around, sprinting around the outer edges of the map and dying. And I'm just holding this base very, very carefully. And it, to me, it's amazing. Um, this film is under six minutes long, and yet it feels like a really long time. I think a lot of people in SWAT, um, and I, again, I heard that guy lifting. Um, a lot of people in SWAT feel like when they're not getting kills, the game is going super slow. As compared to a big team battle game, you may not get a few kills, and you may be like, Oh, well, there's still action going on because there's so many people. But in SWAT, people, people like freak out when they don't get uh, kills in 30 seconds or so. And the, in a, specifically on the map of Drift, what I found is that this strategy I'm showing you right now of holding a base is the best strategy and it works the most times against the better players. You can run clockwise or counterclockwise around the outer edge of the map, sometimes occasionally lifting into a base. But staying in a base when you have a surround sound headset and just using, turning up that volume, using your awareness to know where the players are. And again, I know this player is there, okay? You may not believe me. I hope, I hope that you understand how important this is. Um, right here, having heard this guy, I can listen and I hear someone shoot behind me. But there's no blue arrows on my HUD. The blue arrows, my three blue arrows are all the way across the map. I know there's a guy behind me, okay? And so I'm just going to wait behind this box and notice how I jump out and aim right where his head's going to be and hit him. That's exactly what I'm going to be doing. And I can hear this guy. I know this next guy is going to be in this hallway. I can hear him walking in that hallway. Okay, I know he's going to be there. Now, if your teammates are hanging out, and sorry for the brief black screen there, that's what happened in the game. Um, I think uh, one of the enemy team players quit, maybe rage quit or something. Um, in these games, it is important to remain patient on maps like Adrift and Complex. Specifically on Adrift, you cannot play Adrift like you might play Haven. You're getting kills every 20 seconds or so, or maybe even definitely under that. Um, this is a much more slower paced map. And I would like to say that the st strategy I just used of pushing into this hall, looking this way and using this wall's cover then moving over here peeking out and looking down this staying behind this box and then looking this way that's a very valid strategy and you want to jump when you're going back across this hallway so that you can jump using this ledge as a cover for your head so that the enemy players don't see you that's a good good tip for all the doorways really in those hall those hallways jumping right as you go across them especially if you're not looking through that 
that doorway. Um, people could be looking in through that doorway and killing you. My teammate gets the final kill there. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this SWAT Adrift gameplay. I hope it helped you understand maybe how to play SWAT better on Adrift. Um, now let's go to the stats screen and see how I did. So as you can see right here, I do get 19 kills and 4 deaths. And I want you to specifically notice the varying numbers from not only my teammates, but from the enemy team. Look at the enemy team player who went 18 and 20. He got a lot of kills, but also a phenomenal number of deaths. And that's what I'm trying to point out, is on a drift, when you're playing the map, you may feel like the game's going very slowly if you're using the strategy that I detailed in this video. But I can promise you that this is one of the maps where when you play it slow, you tend to do better. Okay, for whatever reason, each of my teammates getting 13 kills, each one just going positive four. I have five less deaths than him and six more kills than him just from hanging back in a base and guarding my angles. So once again, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you on the next capture or whatever I end up recording. Peace, guys.